the health system restructuring announced this morning is reckless and rushed, and we do not support it. At an overarching level, there are three things that we're concerned about. First of all, there's absolutely no mention of cost, and we know that reforms and restructuring of this type is expensive. If we look at the polytechnic reforms, we know it can be in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And money that is spent on reform is money that is not spent on a hip, a knee, a hand procedure, or a corneal lens cataract replacement. So we think this is poor spending. We want to see the details around the costs associated with this. Secondly, the timing is poor. We're coming through a one in a hundred year pandemic. Is this the best time to be doing major structural restructuring like this? I would suggest it's not. We're struggling to roll out the coronavirus vaccine. We've got an underlying mass vaccination MMR program, and we're still looking to deploy the flu vaccine. This is poor timing. The second is the principles that should critique a health system restructuring. And the very first principle for health should always be need. The greatest need receives the resources first. It's not clear to me that this has been well thought through through this restructuring that's been proposed this morning. I'll speak to the four arms of the restructuring. The first is the removal of DHBs. We have grave concern that this will result in a loss of the local voice. We've seen this before. There's a tragic deja vu with this around the 1990 RHAs. And a number of us worked in that sort of environment. And all that happened was the local voice was lost. I know in Northland, our needs, wants and aspirations disappeared into the complex problems of Auckland. So we have grave concerns around the loss of the local voice. The Health New Zealand uh, entity that will be formed, there will be a cost in setting that up. And fundamentally, that's going to be an operational arm of the Ministry of Health. So the Ministry of Health will be policy, and Health New Zealand will be funding and commissioning. The observation, certainly in international environments, is that there will be an unhealthy tension between these two. The policy arm will decide that they want to operationalise some things. The operational arm will say, no, actually, we need policy as well. And it's been pointed out to me that Alberta is a good example of this. Again, there is a tragic deja vu. In 2009, we did exactly this with the National Health Board. And in one year, we wound it up because it didn't achieve its objectives. The third arm is the Māori Health Authority. We do not support a separate health system. We support one health system where the key principle is on need. The greatest need receives the resources first. So we are not supportive of a Māori health authority. Completely understand Māori health inequities. Have rolled my sleeves up and mixed my sweat in that space. I and we understand that. But a Māori health authority is not the way to achieve that goal. The fourth arm to the restructuring announced this morning is a national public health agency. There may be some merits in that. Uh, I'd like to see the details of that. We'd like to know more about that. But certainly during a pandemic, there is merits in having one body responsible for PPE, one source of policy, uh, one source of, of direction. So there may be some merits in, in that arm. We'd like to see the details.